I'm responsible for uh, digital marketing and strategy uh, for the wealth management division of our firm. So that uh, is really extends to all of our advisors across the country, as well as all of our corporate content. I think what's actually really interesting to see is the sort of shifting demographic of digital marketing uh, and people who, you know, we thought that millennials were going to be the biggest demographic that we're using social and digital, but it's extending to different age groups. Um, and I think that that's really neat because it forces us to make kind of unique, different content that, um, you know, is compelling and interesting uh, for a wide variety of people. Uh, so I think that's kind of a, a neat challenge, and I, I think it'll be interesting to see how it, it continues to be adopted. I think it's still a very highly regulated uh, and misunderstood environment that we're working in. Um, so I think from a compliance perspective, it's just a lot of uh, uncertainty around the risk um, and sort of suitability for clients. So I think in terms of really having a clear definition of how to navigate social, it's still very difficult. I think that what that demands of people is to take a leadership position in the space and really dictate how uh, as organizations, they're going to embrace social and, and work with, you know, regulators and legal and risk in the different departments to make sure that they're on side um, and really, you know, take a strong stance on, on making sure that the clients are ultimately the protected ones. I think they need to think about education first and foremost. Um, I think we assume that everybody knows how to send a tweet or how to like write a cool LinkedIn post and definitely I will tell you right now that they don't know how to do that. Um, so education is a really, really big hurdle for uh, people to overcome, especially in this industry where you know the average age is much higher than sort of your typical user of social. Um, and then I think, you know, giving people really compelling content for them to use so that they're not forced to, you know, write stuff on their own or look for images on their own. You're really giving them the stuff that they need to be successful. And once you start providing a program that is successful on its own, it's going to breed continued success uh, as you distribute that to your network. From a biased perspective, Hootsuite, we are a Hootsuite customer. We love Hootsuite. Um, we listen uh, to both our advisors and our clients uh, by way of the, the enterprise offering that they have. Uh, and we also use Amplify as an employee advocacy tool. Uh, so we can see the content that our advisors are using and sharing, and we can understand better what they like and what they don't like, and what their clients then like and don't like. So uh, by having sort of a whole picture uh, of what content is interesting and what people are responding to, I think we're ultimately more successful at the end of the day. I think people pushing product is a really bad mistake. Um, you know, n nobody needs to have another, you know, product pushed down uh, their throat. And ultimately, I can go to any store or look online if I want to find out something about a product. Uh, but what I am looking for is you know, unique ideas or ways to think about things. And, you know, if products support that, I think that that's great. But uh, we're just not in an environment where people need things sold to them anymore. That's just not how we operate. That's not how, like, humans engage with products anymore. So I think it's a really, really dangerous thing for people to think that product or performance is going to be um, something that people respond to because ultimately they can find that information out on their own.